Hi, this is Kelsey Fikowski for AP Gov, and in this video we're going to be looking at a First Amendment case involving the freedom of speech, and this is of course known as Schenck v. the United States. This happens in the context of the First World War. So some background information here. The First Amendment, of course, involves the freedom of speech, one of the most renowned aspects involving the First Amendment, along with uh, the other four. And, of course, this right, um, though among others, is not absolute. Uh, the government has placed restrictions on it. Uh, for example, just because you have the freedom of speech does not mean you can say anything you want. For example, you are not allowed today to yell fire in a crowded movie theater, right? That would cause panic. People could get injured rushing for the exits. So that is criminalized speech. In addition, you can't purposely and knowingly write uh, false things about people uh, that is considered libel. So there are restrictions that can be placed upon your rights, including the freedom of speech. And in the context of World War I, which the U.S. had just entered into, Congress passes the Espionage Act, which made it a crime to cause insubordination, disloyalty, mutiny, refusal of duty in the military, as well as prevent military recruiting. So what did Charles Schenck uh, of the Socialist Party uh, do? He was the secretary of the Philadelphia chapter. He was arrested after printing and mailing more than 15,000 flyers that blatantly encouraged men who were about to get drafted uh, to basically say resist this, that the draft is unconstitutional, you shouldn't be entering into the military, and ultimately Schenck is going to be arrested, he's going to be convicted, and the Supreme Court is going to uh, hear his uh, particular case. And this is a unanimous decision that's going to be ruled in favor of the United States. And basically what the justices are, justices are saying in the majority opinion here is that in the context of the U.S. attempting to recruit these draftees into World War I, outlawing speech that could disrupt the military did not violate the First Amendment because it involved a national security issue. So think of it in the context of this uh, particular light, that if people began to heed the warnings of Charles Schenck and they did not enlist in the military and they were resisting the recruitment efforts, that this could place the United States at risk, in, in particular in World War I. So as a result, the Supreme Court is going to establish what's known as the clear and present danger test. And this is the standard that's going to be used to determine whether or not speech is protected. If there's a clear and present danger, as the SCOTUS judge justices are going to say, and again, they're going to claim that that danger is that if you don't have men going into the military and are, again, heeding the advice and words of Shank, that this could create a danger to the United States national security. So uh, Shank's conviction is going to be upheld in this unanimous decision. It's important to note that during times of war, you tend to see people's civil rights curtailed. A good example of this as well, although not required any longer in the AP exam curriculum, concerns the Korematsu case, uh, which is going to be upheld in terms of allowing the internment of Japanese citizens. Um, so again, big theme here is that in times of crises, in times of war, people's rights tend to also be more restricted. Another good example just to throw out there for you is after September 11th with respect to the Patriot Act, as there is some debate as to whether or not that infringes on people's Fourth Amendment rights as it will allow the government to engage in uh, warrantless wiretapping in issues involving national security. It is important to note, though, that over time since this case, and again, 1919, more than a a hundred years has have elapsed here. SCOTUS has ruled much more in favor of free speech rights, and they have abandoned that clear and present danger test overall. Uh, but certainly, it was used for a long period, and it is going to be used to upheld uh, the uh, Espionage Act, which again is going to curtail people's First Amendment rights to freedom of speech.